The founders of NDTV, Pranoy Roy and Radhika Roy, on Tuesday resigned from the board of RRPR Holdings, the main holding entity of the promoters that owns 29.2% of stake in the media house, which is the NDTV. The next day, primetime anchor and veteran journalist Ravish Kumar made the news of his resignation public. Today's evening is such a evening where the birds are not looking at the birds, because no one has taken the birds. But in front of it, a wide open sky is looking at the birds. I have given it to you. Hello, I am Ravish Kumar. Now I am not going to listen to you on that channel. Hello, I am Ravish Kumar. The big news, which is the Adani Group's takeover of NDTV, has been a few months in the making now. Here's a detailed look at what's happening. The centerpiece of the story is a firm, which is called the Vishwa Pradhan Commercial Private Limited, which is the VCPL, founded in 2008. NDTV founders Radhika and Pranoy Roy took a 4 billion rupee loan from VCPL and in exchange issued warrants or a guarantee that allowed the company to acquire 29.18% stake in the news group. Those warrants were convertible at any point of time. On August 23rd this year, AMG Media Networks, which is wholly owned and a subsidiary of Adani Enterprises, acquired a 100% stake in VCPL. So with the VCPL purchase, it meant that the Adani Group could acquire that 29.18% stake in NDTV upon the conversion of warrants in the RRPR holding into equity shares. The Roy's, who are the founders and promoters of NDTV, indicated that this exercise of purchasing the rights of VCPL was executed without any input or any conversation with them or their consent to it. They also said that the transfer of RRPR shares to VCPL, which could give the Adani Group the big share in the company in NDTV, could not go ahead without the nod from the Securities and the Exchanges Bureau of India, which is the SEBI. Since the founder promoters were restrained from the securities market for two years, that period ended on November 26, 2022. On the same day, the VCPL notified RRPR Holding of its intention to convert these warrants, which were issued back in 2009, into equity shares, giving the firm a 99.5% control of the company. This would, as the VCPL claimed, trigger a mandatory open offer for an additional 26% stake. The Adani Group then reiterated its commitment to the open offer, first indicating a tentative timeline of October 17th to November 1st for the issue. This was then pushed to November 22nd, following the SEBI's approval to the open offer. The open offer of nearly 493 crore rupees concludes on December 5. The RRPR has transferred 99.5% ownership of its shares it held in the media company to the Adani Group subsidiary VCPL. RRPR held 28.18% in NDTV. On Tuesday, the Roy's had resigned from the board of the RRPR holdings. NDTV takeover is, to my mind, part of a regular process of a merger and acquisition. The entity is a media entity and therefore needs to be understood in a different context. But as far as the world of mergers and acquisitions is concerned, it's pretty much simple and straightforward. You have a buyer and a seller. The buyer has to decide how much he or she is willing to pay. And the seller has to figure out whether the price makes sense. In addition, there may very often, as in the case of NDTV, be complications because of holding companies and layered equity structures. So sometimes when an M&A acquisition takes place, you need to either unravel that a bit or decide at which point in the value chain the acquirer wants to take over the shares. So this is precisely what happened in the case of the NDTV takeover. And from the process point of view, the 
only things that were remarkable was the fact that bits and pieces of news kept coming out. Some of them helped the market to go up. Some ensured that the market stayed damp. But given that this is a publicly listed company, much of it had to happen within the framework that SEBI allowed. Is this deal therefore hugely different? The answer is no. Is this deal hugely significant? The answer actually is that because NDTV is seen as being a different kind of publication, there was a lot of public interest in the process of its taking over. What does this mean for the media landscape? I think essentially, if one removes the personal stories around anchors, individuals, etc., it's likely to be that one owner has transited and you are in a situation where the new owner will have to decide whether wants to make profits, want company around, or wants to keep things largely as they were. Both models exist in the world of MA. For example, you may have a company changing its brand, you may have a company changing its CEO, you may have other changes at the CXO suite level, but whatever it is, that is technically up to the new owner. When a 100% sale happens, the new owners are the only ones who have a role to play. And as far as we are concerned, the old owners are now no longer part of any decision making. Amid this, two media business veterans, Sanjay Pogalia and Central Chenga Lavarian, have been appointed as the latest board members. Pogalia is the chief executive officer and editor in chief of AMG Media. Adani Enterprises inducted the veteran journalist as the CEO and editor-in-chief to lead the group's media initiatives in 2021. Chenga Lavarian, on the other hand, was the founding editor of CNBC TV 18 and was the editor-in-chief of Network 18's business newsroom. What is interesting and is left to be seen now is how this process of a takeover will unravel in the next few days to come and we at The Wire will bring you the latest on the updates. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.